J.R.R. Tolkien's immortal Lord of the Rings was sold to Swedish video game conglomerate Embracer in an overnight buying spree by the company. Well, overnight here in the States, but certainly during daylight hours over in Europe. We're going to talk about that here. We have few details at this point with this breaking news, but let's go over what we do know, what we don't know, and some of the myths and rumors that I'm sure that are going to pop out of this over the course of the day until we get more information. Stay tuned. Let's get into it. Well, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video who might not yet be subscribed, please hit that little red subscribe button and turn it gray. Leave a like on the video. Share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, do leave a comment before you head out the door today. And also make sure you hit that notification bell. That's really important to make sure you get notified when new videos drop on this channel at Valiant Renegade. Because this is the channel where people come to when they want to see Hollywood put through the business in financial lens of reality. And today is a big one. So let's talk about where this started a few months ago, shall we? As some of you may recall, a report from Variety back in February of this year, about six months ago now, had an article saying that the Saul Zantz Company, the former owner and the owner of Lord of the Rings since 1976, was putting the entirety of the franchise and all of the intellectual property rights up on the bidding block. They were asking for a reported two billion U.S. dollars for the entirety of the franchise. Now, at the time, there was much speculation that Amazon might jump in since they had recently acquired the television rights to create their new series, Lord of the Rings, which, of course, doesn't really seem to have too much to do with Lord of the Rings apart from in name only. It looks like we're kind of getting a discount version that really hasn't been about anything that Tolkien actually wrote. It's just getting shoehorned in like so many things in Hollywood these days where they basically abuse popular IPs in order to make a quick buck, or maybe not in Amazon's case, but it should be a big hit on Prime nonetheless, at least for Prime. Now, of course, that may fall off depending on how good or how bad the series turns out to be. But at this point, speculation has run rampant as far as what would happen in the show. But I don't think a lot of people have too many high hopes for this one. Now, those licensing rights for Amazon Prime regarding the television series for Lord of the Rings came with a reported $250 million price tag for however many seasons that they contracted for, I believe four or five. Now, at this point, we do know that Amazon has seemingly spent another $1 billion, according to Hollywood reports, to actually produce the show. Now, much of that production budget has probably gone into things like sets uh, and costumes that will be reused season to season, so I doubt that $1 billion price tag will happen every couple of seasons. There's a lot of upfront costs to start something like that, but certainly Amazon right now is probably left as stunned as we are with this news breaking on the sale to Embracer. Now, let's talk about who Embracer is. From Deadline Magazine, August 18th, 2022, published at 2.23 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I believe. Embracer Group acquires IP rights to Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Now, this wasn't the only thing that Swedish conglomerate Embracer acquired at the same time overnight here in the States. They also picked up a couple of video game studios from Square Enix, the makers of the very popular Final Fantasy series, although Final Fantasy, of course, was not part of that deal. However, several other studios making other relatively popular games were. And as Embracer continues to build its conglomerate portfolio, it looked like Lord of the Rings was one of the things they went after because Embracer has a history of also producing games for Lord of the Rings themselves. But this is a bit of a surprise for them to take the whole ball of wax at this point. But let's check out the article from Deadline. Swedish video game company Embracer Group has acquired Middle Earth Enterprises, a division of the Saul Zanz Company, which owns the intellectual property catalog and worldwide rights to the Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. 
The financial terms of the acquisition were not disclosed, but the deal means that Embracer Group will pick up the motion picture, video game, board game, merchandising, theme parks, and stage production rights relating to Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit franchises, as well as matching rights in other Middle-Earth-related literary works authorized by the Tolkien Estate and HarperCollins, which have yet to be explored. Continuing on, quote, I'm truly excited to have The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, one of the world's most epic fantasy franchises, join the Embracer family, opening up more transmedia opportunities, including synergies across our global group, said Lars Wingfor, founder and group CEO for Embracer Group. Quote, I'm thrilled to see what lies in the future for this IP with Free Mode and Asmodee as a start within the group. Going forward, we also look forward to collaborating with both existing and new external licensees of our increasingly stronger IP portfolio. As part of the deal, Middle Earth Enterprises will form part of the newly founded operative group, Embracer Free Mode. The company will continue to operate independently under the existing Middle Earth Enterprises leadership team. In a statement, Marty Glick, COO, that's Chief Operations Officer of the Saul Zanz Company, said, We at the Zanz Company have had the honor over the past half century of stewarding the Tolkien rights so that Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit fans worldwide could enjoy award-winning epic films, challenging video games, first-rate theater, and merchandise of every variety. We could not be more thrilled that it is Embracer now taking up the responsibility, and we are confident their group will take it to new heights and dimensions while maintaining homage to the spirit of those great literary works. Embracer's operative group, Asmodee Group, has a long-standing relationship with Tolkien IP, having published Lord of the Rings board games over 20 years ago, as well as producing Lord of the Rings the card game. Key upcoming works set in Middle-Earth, in which Middle-Earth Enterprises has financial interests, include Amazon's highly anticipated series, The Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, which debuts September 2, 2022, as well as the Warner Brothers animated film, The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim, set for release in 24. The EA Electronic Arts mobile game, Lord of the Rings, Heroes of Middle-Earth. So to be clear, as many people have questions, we still don't know what the final purchase price was. But we do know, like I said before, that the Saul Zanz company was asking for roughly $2 billion for the whole kit and caboodle back in February. So we can reasonably assume the purchase price was somewhere in that ballpark of $2 billion, although I'm sure Embracer Group did as best they could to negotiate that price down. And that is a price that will likely be liquidated over the course of time, or other words, they will probably have a series of amortized payments over the course of a few years. As a matter of fact, it seems the totality of the purchases that Embracer Group made overnight, not only with Lord of the Rings, but other video game enterprises as well, will cost them somewhere between five and six hundred million dollars in the first year. So that's part of those amortized payments. Now, what this article does make clear that is of no surprise is that the previously existing contracts and licenses that the Zantz company held with places like Warner Brothers or now Warner Brothers Discovery under David Zaslov and with places like Amazon and Amazon Prime for the television rights that they have with their new series, The Rings of Power, those will stand. Anytime a purchase or an acquisition is made like this, all of those liabilities and contracts are part of the sale. They cannot be disturbed unless, of course, there is something within those contracts that would allow those contracts to be reset upon a sale. However, that would be highly unlikely as companies like Amazon and Warner Brothers would certainly look to protect their own financial interests that they have acquired at that point. Now, Warner Brothers' War of the Rohirrim is being produced in part because there was some discrepancy or there was some legal wrangling to decide, did Warner Brothers still actually hold the film rights? So this is why War of the Rohirrim was really pushed into production to make sure that they could continue to establish uh, their, their, their hold on that film rights. So I, there may be some legal wrangling going forward with that now that Embracer has it to really basically probe to see how well that contract holds up. However, I highly doubt it, uh, even though it may be a small possibility that that will happen. But where we are right now is still a lot that we don't know. But nothing's going to stop Amazon's rings of power from going forward, and nothing seems to be stopping War of the Rohirrim from going forward. What Embracer at this point is counting on is to lever this property much more than it has been in, say, the last decade since The Hobbit concluded its run with Peter Jackson in the theaters. I'm sure Embracer Group 
is looking to really turn this into something new. We're probably going to see a lot more games, video games in particular, especially after they just acquired so many new video game studios into the group at the exact same time that they bought Lord of the Rings from the Saul Zanz company. So that's what we have right now. There's still a lot of details missing, but I have a feeling over the next 24 to 48 hours, we're going to be getting a lot more news and updates, not only about what the Embracer group may have paid for this, uh, for this purchase, but also some more definitive plans in terms of what they want to do with this franchise going forward. Are they going to renew a contract for film rights with Warner Brothers? Are they going to renew a television contract down the road with Amazon Prime? Or will they try to shop it out amongst other places? What will happen to the merchandising rights going forward? Will they try to farm those out to a company like Hasbro or Mattel if they're not already there? There's a lot going on because every time something new gets made, like a movie from Warner or a television show from Amazon Prime, that's going to elicit a desire for new merchandise properties to go along with those film and television projects. So that's something that is going to be interesting to see going down the road where that's going to be. And of course, the books themselves are still a hot seller. So Embracer for the right price hopefully got themselves a very valuable IP and they know what to do with it. And most importantly, let's hope that they respect the IP and the work of Tolkien going forward. That's all for today. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, do leave a comment with your thoughts below. I want to know what you think about this purchase by Embracer Group of Lord of the Rings. And until next time, take care.